So here we are, Moments of Clarity podcast. We've got Smoke Perp as our special guest. Ramon's not with us, but Shaheem is. Celebrate that. And here we are catching up with Smoke Perp, who's putting out Florida JIT very shortly. Tell us about the project. Mm -hmm. What's going on? So, yeah, Florida JIT is dropping June 5th. I'm dropping a music video tonight at midnight. That's the second single from the album. Um, and yeah, Florida Jit to me, what it means is, you know, I'm from Florida and I'm, so I'm a Florida Jit. So what it, what it means to me is just, you know, I just want to do something for my city. You know what I'm saying? I got Rick Ross on there. Um, and it, it, it's really just back to the basics, you know, just back to how it all started, basically. That's what the album sounds like. Yeah, we heard that it's like, it's, this, this one is like more turned up. It's, it's taking it back to... Yeah. The SoundCloud, per, the, the, the basics. The, yeah. What made What made you go back in that direction? I don't know. I feel like I feel like now now that I have a you know what I'm saying I have I have a, a big platform. I have a voice. You know what I'm saying thanks to you guys for make, for making me a freshman. You know I'm very grateful. And um, I feel like now that I have the platform and I have the voice to do things i feel like it's only right you know i i do something for my city donate to charities you know what i'm saying donate to kids like I'll, and, and that's and, and that's what i'm doing right now with that that's really dope man um tell me about like some of the uh the charities and stuff that, that you're involved in to be honest i don't have none of that bro i just put up the money like i got my managers for that you know what i'm saying but yeah yeah so it's just donating to charities and shit, uh, schools that I went to and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's really, it's really just like, I want to, I want to have a stamp in, I want to have a stamp in my city. You know what I'm saying? And having going, going to the features, having Rick Ross on that album, you know what I'm saying? He's from the same city as me, you know what I'm saying? No more than 10 blocks. So that's a, that's, that's a big, that's a big thing to me. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, really, I just want to give back to Florida. I want to, you know, I want to, I want, I want people to embrace Florida culture more. You know what I'm saying? The sped up music and all, you know, stuff like that. That's really dope, man. Tell me, tell us about the song with, with you and Rose. What's the, what's the song y'all got together? So me and Rick Ross got a song called Big Dog. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's really one of my it's really one of my favorite songs on the album because Rick Ross is one of my favorite rappers. He's always been one of my favorite rappers growing up. Like you know, what I'm saying I grew up in Miami, so since since Port of Miami, he's been one of my favorite rappers. And um, yeah, it's an it's an amazing song. I don't know if you guys if you guys got like if you guys got the songs yet, but um, if you don't, um, I'll send them to you guys so you guys can hear it. Yeah, we need that. We need that early preview. So who else tell yeah, us yeah, who else you sure. worked with for the project? We heard there were mentions of uh, Denzel. He's Florida, right? Pop, well, that's your friend, your brother. Pop, Florida, Denzel. and then Jack Harlow. Right, yeah, Jack Harlow, uh, Young Nudie. Young Nudie, um, yep, yeah. we heard that. Denzel and Pump, which are from Florida, too. And um, the production is mostly from, from Ronnie J, which is, you know, he's, he came up with us in Florida. You know what I'm saying? So... It's the, like I said, it's back to the basics, you know, production by Ronnie, um, high energy songs, you know what I'm saying? Some songs have a little twist to them, you know what I'm saying? Always got to change it up. You always got to reinvent. You can't, you can't stay the same forever, you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this project and uh, I think it's going to be great. Why do you think rappers find it so important to give back to their city, give back to their state? You know, it's almost more than any genre of music. It's very much about where you're from. It's always been this way. It's nothing new. But what do you think your take is on that? And why do you think it's more hip hop than any other genre, which people would argue? See, I believe, um, I believe it's with hip hop, with hip hop more than any genre is because like just the culture of hip hop and like, you know, where we come from, you know, use the culture of hip hop where you come from is usually like, you know, a hood, you know what I'm saying? Like from poverty. So that's, I think, I believe that's the reason why hip hop is usually like the genre that's always giving back because that's where we come from, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's how we grew up. And if it, 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 it'll feel good, it, it feels good to give, to give back to the people who, 
who, who, who I know are going through the same thing I went through or grew up how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, that's what I think it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the things um, in, in the making of this album, one of the things that I heard is that you had a Kanye record and he kind of decided to to back out because he's going just in a different direction with his music and with his life. Tell, tell me about that. Tell me about the song that y'all made and, you know, if it's true that he backed out. Um, He didn't whack out, really. It just got leaked. But um, it wasn't, the, the Kanye song wasn't supposed to be on Florida J. It was actually supposed to be on Death Star 2. Oh. But, um, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? The leaks and stuff and, you know what I'm saying? Nobody really has said nothing. Nobody really has said nothing until, like, well, I, I never saw that post. So when I saw that post, I, I felt like I had to put it up. It's like, yo, like, sometimes you guys are saying, like, where's Perp? Perp fell off. He's not dropping music, but it's like, you guys are leaking my music. What am I going to drop? You know what I'm saying? We're wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars on music videos and marketing for somebody to just leak the audio. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, with the... But yeah, uh, with the with, with the Kanye song, it, it for me for me it was more it was more of the leak thing. But I think you know on his on his side, you know what I'm saying. When I when I talked to Mike Dean because Mike Dean executive produced the the whole Death Star too, it was more on so it, you know he just took a different route. You know what I'm saying. He doesn't curse or anything, and you know the song has like some profanity in it because the song is not new. You know what I'm saying. That that song was recorded a a, a while ago, so. Right. Uh, on his side, I think that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like he changed his ways and, and stuff like that. He's going the Christian route. And then for me, it was just, it got leaked. You know what I'm saying? Which is, which is like, I felt, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of sad about it because, you know, Kanye is, is one of my favorite artists. You know what I'm saying? I grew up on, I grew up on Kanye, 50 Cent, and Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? And Rick Ross. So, you know, having a song with Kanye was like a huge milestone for me. Or somebody to just leak it, you know, like it kind of hurt me a little bit. But how do you think that was um that happened? I don't understand. I, how did how you have a song, you hold it in your possession. I, how do you how do the leaks happen, or what is your idea of what happens? Um, my idea of what, of what happens is usually like I think engineers sell the song, or producers get uh overly excited or they don't know if it's gonna come out so they just put it out themselves like you know I don't I don't think it's gonna come out so I'm gonna leak it. So that's that's where I think it strengths from, you know what I'm saying? Or 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 emails getting hacked, you know, because if somebody knows I have like a really special song, they know they can't hack me, but they'll probably try to hack somebody's phone who I hang out with and get the song from there. You know, you know how you know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see that more and more with more rappers dealing with leaks that they, you know, when you see them venting online about it or saying stuff is like, who leaked my music? Or, you know, rollouts. Because- I mean, Kanye went through that. Different artists have gone through seeing these people get their hands on the music, which has always happened when you saw leaks of full albums. But usually mm-hmm. you'll thought that came from the plant. This seems like it's kind of different because there is no plant, you know, or the same way. Right, and it just and it just messes, and, and, and just even be like past the music, it just messes up everything, you know, because we we build a whole marketing plan, you know what I'm saying? We we waste thousands and thousands of dollars, you know what I'm saying? Shoot videos and do everything we have to do, you know what I'm saying? Clearances and stuff like that, and and that's a lot of money going down the drain when you just leak a song, you know what I'm right. saying? And then not only not only does the song not come out, but that also makes me look bad to my label because you know they're putting up the money. Right. right, right. You switch your security precautions. Have you switched your security precautions when it comes to the songs and everything like that? Um, yeah, really. Um, really, really. Now I try. I try not to save my songs on my like. I, I try not to save my songs in my notes and stuff like that because there's certain there's certain phone carriers where if you have a person's full name and phone number, they can just send you a SIM card and they have your phone. So what I try to do is like, you know, say, say, save the song somewhere safe in a hard drive and stuff like that. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's still, with leaks, it, it, it's, there's always going to be a way for them to come out because engineers have them, producers have them, um, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and they get around and then somebody might want to sell it and stuff like that. You know, how it, it's just, it's messed up. But, you know, it's something we got to deal with in, in hip hop. In rap period, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's it's been happening since the beginning, and 
You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it just bothers, you know, it just sucks. Mm. Shit, you put me on the game right now with that. You get the SIM card from the phone carrier now. I'm nervous. <laughs> you know, wow. Yeah, man. I didn't even know that. Like the first time I got hacked, you know, first time I ever got hacked in uh, 2000, 2016, um, I had a friend who used to protect my accounts. And then he told me that, that what they did was like they had my phone number, my full name, and, uh, and um, the address that was linked to my phone. And I had T-Mobile. I didn't know that T-Mobile, all you needed was a phone number and this, and you could just get a SIM card to this person's phone. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to go through like three-step verification and, you know, just try to be more safe with it. And T-Mobile. How was it out in Florida, man? I, I, I got a brother that lives out there. Shout out to my brother, Ari, and his whole fam, man. He, he's been telling me that, you know, it it's kind of been pretty normal um, down there. I mean, obviously some stuff was closed, but everything is open. Actually, I'm not sure if it's if it was a storm or a hurricane, but there was like a really bad, uh, a really bad storm like the uh, past few days, um, which is, it's not, it's not nothing crazy. This is hurricane season in Florida. You know what I'm saying? When summer comes around. Um, but yeah, I go, I, I live in California, but I go back to Florida a lot because uh, my mom lives over there. You know, I got her a house over there. My brothers live over there. So I go back a lot. But besides that, you know, I'm quarantined right here. Hold on. Let me show you guys the view. Wait, wait you know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm just quarantined. You know, I was quarantined before quarantine. Shit, it looked like y'all had a, a party or something. I see the balloon. I know. I want to know what the balloon is. What's the gold balloon up above you? Oh, my, my birthday just passed. It was my birthday, so we had a few people over, you know, close people, not people I don't know. You know Happy what I'm saying? Can't risk that. Are you wearing Happy masks birthday. everywhere? What are you doing? A no mask, mask? What's going on? No, no, no. I got to wear a mask outside. I'm scared. I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I try, I try to not even go outside. You know what I'm saying? If I go outside, it'll probably be to the studio, and I'm booking the whole studio out to myself. <laughs> so you've been at home really over the last three months, inside, inside, besides going to visit your family? I, I, I've been inside, and then I've been, um, you know, going to the studio. Like, if I rent out a studio, um, I visited my mom. And um, besides that, I try to stay inside because, you know, my security's quarantined, too. So really, right. I can't move around a lot. Right. Right. That's just yeah. why. I just, I can't even believe this is where we're at. But yeah, I mean, Sean and I have been doing a lot of different podcasts and we talk to everybody and uh, I'm shocked every time, you know? What have you been watching? Yeah. TV? How do you keep busy? Like you're in the house, you're not at the studio. What are you doing? Because I'm going nuts. I, I do go to the studio, but um, I really I mean, when you're not watching shows studio. that I haven't watched. Like Shaz um, missed the TV and movie over there. Yeah, I just finished watching Trailer Park Boys. I had never watched the Trailer Park Boys show until now, and it's it's funny. It's funny. I love it. So I just finished watching that, and I'm kind of sad that I finished watching it. I didn't want to finish watching it. Oh, I know. When the season ends and you're like, I'm all caught up, there's no more left? Yeah. Yeah, I watched, I watched no Dexter. Dexter was insane. Have you seen the show, Dexter? Yes, years ago when I was on TV, actually, Dexter was crazy with the blood samples and the collections. What'd you think of the end of the season? Yeah, so I finished it. I actually tried watching it before, but it was a little too slow for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The first episode. Once I got past the first episode, I was hooked. I couldn't stop. Yeah. I watched it in like three. Yeah, that's how I was with Shameless. It took me a minute to get into Shameless, the first few episodes. And then the next thing I know, I was in 10 seasons of it. And nonstop. Yeah, I started watching real people. Yeah, I started. I started watching Shameless too. I haven't finished that though. I started watching Shameless too. But what do you um, think of the Dexter yeah, just, and him and the decision he made? I mean, I know it's a hundred years ago, but I remember distinctly that he chose to pretend he was dead, right, and let the family or the li the family live without him or live their life without him. And that seems so sad to me that his choice was to like go be a lumberjack. I think, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, that's really, that's really what I've been doing. I just, and, and listening to a lot of old music. I've been listening to, I've been listening to a lot of old music, trying to draw new inspiration. You know what I'm saying? For, uh, cause I have, um, yeah, good question. Shia. Cause I have, Go ahead. so what I was going to say is cause, um, I have besides Florida, I have two more projects done. Ah. And then, um, so I'm working. 
So I'm working on the project after that one, which is Sound of Space, which is part of the Dead Star series. And um, I really just been listening to not so old, but you know, some old or or if not just music that I don't regularly listen to, you know, pick up new influences and, and stuff like that. Yeah, like, or just going or just or just going back to what I used to listen to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listening to uh, old Gucci, um old 50 Cent, a lot of Tame Impala, a lot of Arctic Monkeys, like, you know, just stuff, just stuff that, besides the hip hop stuff, I'm listening to stuff that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't really correlate with hip hop as much, just to, uh, just to get like some, some, some type of outside inspiration outside of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And right. just like kind of bring it into hip hop, because you know, with hip hop, you always got to, you always got to bring something new to the table, because it's, it's moving quick now, you know what I'm saying? It's moving fast now. Are you in the R&B at all, bro? Of course, of course. I sing, yeah. That, I mean, Dead Star 1 has half of the album was melodic. Dead Star 2, same thing. Half of the album was melodic, but um, no, I mean, Sounds like, of Space. To, what you've been listening to? Like, you've been listening to any old R&B stuff? Oh, yeah. I've been listening, I've been listening to exactly what I just told you. R&B-wise, um, oh, damn, have I been listening to any R&B? Um, I don't, I don't think I don't think I've been listening to any R and B that much. If I if I've been listen if I've been listening to uh, the older things I've been listening to is like what I what I do is really I I, I go to because you know Kanye is a big sampler, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I, he, to me, he's the best sampler in the game. So I, I listen to a lot of Kanye West songs and and see what it is that he samples. You know what I'm saying? And then I would go and listen to those artists and, like, you know, see what they do and stuff like that. Like, I really, I try to analyze everything and how people break it down and stuff like that. Because I'm a writer, too. So, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I feel like I need to, I need, I need to know more than hip-hop. I need to know, I need to know where everything originated. I, I want to know. I don't, I don't know yet, but, you know, I, I, I want to learn. I'm learning. I love that, man. It's, it's a lot of people that... They just scared to go back and listen to some of the classics or, or do their research. You know, like a lot of artists. Well, I ain't gonna say a lot of artists. I'll say some artists. They, they, I don't know. They just don't feel inspired to go back and listen to them. But I feel like, man, you, you cheating yourself if you ain't listening to some of these hip hop classics. Yeah, but listen, that's 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 where a lot of that's where a lot of artists mess up because the old stuff is the foundation. You know what I'm saying? If you're not listening to the old stuff, then where are you going to pick up new influences from? The old stuff is the foundation. Old R&B, old rap, you know what I'm saying? Boom, bap. That's, what, that's the foundation. You have to listen to that. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're into hip-hop as much as me, I love hip-hop. I love rap. Like, that's what I live for. So it's like, I, like it, I, I feel obligated to, I need to know the roots. I need to know the foundation. I need to know where what started. You know what I'm saying? I love that, man. How how is this? Cause you know this is the, this is the festival season, man, and you know I I do all of the Rolling Loud, so I usually see you out on Rolling Loud. We do some interviews backstage, and you know the different festivals. How has it been for you? Like you probably haven't been home like this for what the past two three years. Three years, I haven't been stuck at home like this. I've been touring for two three years straight, man. Like I've never been home this long, but um. It doesn't feel all bad. It's, it's 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 a little. It's kind of relaxing, you know what I'm saying? Because taking a flight every day to a different city or a different, you know what I'm saying? It it, it 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 stresses you out sometimes. So I try to I try to see, you know, I try to see things as as, as half full, not half empty. Are you gonna be one of those guys that's rushing back to do shows as soon as they say, okay, we can do shows? Or are you gonna wait and see like what? I mean, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't I don't necessarily I don't necessarily need to rush because I was supposed to be on tour right now. My first show, my the the first show was in an arena. This was about to be the first tour that I had that some venues were arenas. I've never done that many people, and I'm the headliner, so I was so excited. Um, but you know, once this is so, once this is so, this is over. Um, we'll just pick back up right where we left off. Go on tour. I'll probably have a I'll probably have a a second pro a second and third project out by the time I go on tour. So. You know what I'm saying? That that'll make the tour much more, much more fun, much more lit, much more uh, music to to give to the people. Um, you know what I'm saying? Creatively, it, it'll give me more ideas of like what I want, uh, 
as my stage presence and stuff like that. So, like I said, I try I try to look at things in a more in, in a positive way. Yeah, I mean, you're in such a um, one of the things that I love about this generation of artists is that you know, say what you want to say about them. The music is different. Obviously, it's different from the Biggie era, but. You guys, man, you put in that work when it comes to the stage shows. I definitely got to say, going to these festivals, you know, rolling loud, especially seeing yourself and uh, Travis Scott and Uzi and, you know, Pump and all of these guys. You, you really the rolling, loud, the rolling loud thing kind of hurt my feelings because, um, uh, the last rolling loud and this rolling loud, this was like the first few times that I, I'm performing like close to the headliners. Like I'm performing at 9:30 now. Like it feels different when you're performing at night. It's a lot cooler. I promise. Yeah. So I was like, I was looking forward to Florida Jet being out and me performing in my city and you know all that and and uh, yeah, it it kind of it kind of messed that up a little bit. But you know, it it happens. You know, you never know. You you never know what's gonna happen. You always got to be prepared. Um, and, uh, yeah. Sports are coming back, man. They, they, it looks inevitable that NBA is coming back and Major League Baseball and, you know, they're yeah, coming I back. I didn't even know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking inevitable. They've been, they've been putting some plans together. They're getting it together. Uh, hockey, uh, NFL, of course. So it looked like they're going to be coming back. But right now it looks like they're going to be back with no – audience, no fans in the building. How do you feel about the, uh, yeah, that makes- yeah, how do you feel about the possibility of, you know, you having to do some shows with no fans? Like, say you Yeah, the new setup, what is it? Arena and it's no fans. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Another thing is, um, I, ha- I live in LA, so I had, uh, me and my friends had like uh, bought out a skybox for the whole season, and we can't even use it. <laughs> yeah, I hope the I hope they the carry it over. I hope they carry it over for, for the next season, man. So you guys don't no, don't lose your really money. Man, it's it's like kind of the rent out of skybox for the whole season. That was a ticket, man. <laughs> for just, oh, yeah, for just to get canceled. The, the Lakers, hell yeah, the Lakers with LeBron and AD and everybody. So, yeah. Uh, so the Lakers are, are, you, are your team now. Do you have a Do you have a favorite team? I know you live in LA, but do you have just have um, a favorite team to follow? You know, I'm from Miami, so Miami's always going to be my number one. But uh, I'm really right now. I'm really rocking with the Bucks, and I'm rocking. I'm rocking with the Bucks, and I'm rocking with the Clippers. Mm, okay. Okay, the, shoot, that might be the finals right there. The the, the Bucks and the Clippers, if, if they able to work it out and get the teams back, yeah. that look like it could be the team, man. You know, uh, the Greek Freak, he, they they just on ESPN. Hmm. They they just labeled him the number two player in the world behind LeBron and right above KD. I think KD was number three. Uh, Kawhi number four and Steph Curry number five, according to ESPN, man. You like those rankings? Steph Curry number five? Yeah, they kind I of think Steph Curry them. should be a little higher. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with those rankings. I definitely think Steph Curry should be a little higher. You know what I'm saying? Cause he definitely changed that's the that, that's, that man. That's, that's that man. Yeah, he changed the league, man. He definitely changed the league. So James Harden too. Harden's nasty yeah. with that step back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, James Harden is in there. He he got to get his defense up a little bit, but you know he still could drop. And, 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 and that's and that's my boy too. Shout out James Harden. That's my boy. Yeah, I'm just seeing him him give back and everything, man. What what type of reflect reflecting did you do um on your birthday? How, how old are you now? I just turned twenty three. Ah, old you Twenty that that's huh? a that's a beautiful age. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful age, man. Like, what what type of reflecting did you do on on your day? 
Man, I was just thinking about I was just thinking about my whole life, like you know what I'm saying, where I came from, where I'm at. Like I, I own a house, like you know what I'm saying. It's it's beautiful. It feels good. Like I I was able to move my mom out. You know what I'm saying. My 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 pops. I'm able to provide for my family, and that's the best feeling because, like like I said, like it's not not even a sound cliche, but like I really come I really come from nothing. I really come from hand me downs and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying. And you able to do this in in a, in a few short years, man. I mean, just just a few years. You know, twenty three. A lot of people are still trying to figure that. It, it took a little bit. I've been coming to XXL since I was nineteen, but that's I enough. know a long time. Yes, it's yeah. been a long time yeah. to be coming up and visiting, and uh, we're watching you grow. And yeah, and you knew how how important like. The XXL was the, was the XXL thing it like is to me still like I'm I'm coming back like every few months like you know what I'm saying I was coming back, back like everybody to yeah, be I love it. and I love he it. says you know I'm ready for my own cover <laughs> yeah you and everybody else I'm still ready the for same it. thing and I'm like okay I'm doing good too how are you you know but I know <laughs> one day you know. We only come out with a few a year now. I mean, we're still, we're trying to work on freshmen right now. And, um, you know, we were supposed to shoot that already and it come out soon, but everything's been on hold because you can't get a big group together to do stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out how to do I mean, freshmen now and what you could do. But you know what a big day that is. You can't get all those people together right now and yeah. uh, breathe, breathe and all over each other. To me, my the the XXL freshman cover that's still that's still like my biggest accomplishment to this day because you know as a kid that's that like as a not even as a kid as a teen like rapping that was that's like the most important thing the most important thing to you is making that freshman list it's like, it's almost like winning a Grammy so you know to this day that's still like to me my biggest accomplishment you know what I'm saying so I really appreciate you guys like you know for that. What um? What are your top five rappers? Well, who are your top five? What are you most like? If you had to make a list right now, who would they be? I was about to ask the same thing. Oh, see me shy. Okay. Because they're so long. Okay, top five. Uh, let's put let's put a Lil Wayne in there. Mm. Let's put Rick Ross in there. Let's put Smoke in there. You cannot pick yourself uh, top five. I'm sorry. You can put okay. the sixth play, the sixth man award, and you're that sixth player, you know, on the bench for the sixth player or whatever. But right now, you cannot be in your own top five. Ruling that out. All right. All right. So, so you can I would have say Wayne, uh, you can have Ross. Now let's go with three others. Okay, so Wayne, Ross, um, Chief Keef. You know what I'm saying? Because I was I was still young when he came out, so you know he. He and he and he influenced like my generation. I would have to say Chief Keef. Um, let me see. Uh, Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent is my number one. Number 50 one. Cent is my number one. Okay, Fifty Cent is number one. Yeah. Fifty Cent is my number one. And then uh, the fifth spot, I would give it to. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. This this is critical right here. Um. Can I take a second and think? You can take a second to think. Right. Do you want Sean and I to talk to each other while you think, or do you want us to come back by the end? No, you guys can talk. You guys can talk. Let me just think. Uh, so what's going on? This spot, who would I give it? I think I think I would give that. I think I think I'll give that fit. That's this spot. It would have to be between. Um, Future, it's, it's it's three of them. It would have to be between like Future, Doug, or Pimp C, cause like you know what I'm saying like the whole dark thing, the whole like, you know, just the whole culture of the golds and cars. You know what I'm saying? That's that was a big inspiration and like the way I the, the way I carry myself and make myself look like my presence, my social media presence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got your top eight or something like that. Top seven. So now, what about the new guys? Like, who 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 do you suggest should be your freshman this year? New guys that's breaking through. Um, let me see. Let me go. Let me go. Through, I'll go through my playlist for you right now. Yeah, go through. Uh, hey, Devon, pass me my phone. 
I think I think it's that one. It's not it. It's not it's a it's a, it's a Yops one. Um, I really I really like um. Let me see, cause I'm, I've been listening I've been listening to a lot of people, a lot of new artists. Uh, um, I like I like Lil Tecca. I'm saying I like Lil Tecca. Okay, there you go. I got I got my phone. Let me look at my playlist. All right, get through. Uh, so so yeah, I really I really like Lil Tecca. Um, I really like Stunner. Stunner actually Stunner. Stunner actually just hit me up to make a song, so I'm about to make a song with Stunner. Stunner for Vegas. Um, wait, what was that? Let me see. So yeah, that's that's Stunner. Um, Lil Tucker, uh, new artist. Uh, Ji Ji is nice. From New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ji. Uh, New York, New Yorker, sweetie. He's not from New York. No, I said, but you're talking okay. to New Yorkers right now. Jazz in New York, and I'm in New York. It's- um, and he got the New York hat on too, so he rapping. <laughs> pop, 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 smoke had the game on lock. Rest in peace to pop smoke. Um, yes. Who else? For uh, forty two, Doug. Out of here. 42 Doug out of here. Um, there's this dude that I found that 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 goes crazy. His name is uh two C two times. He goes crazy. I like his music. And um, you know who's really, really hard that I've been listening to a lot? No cap. No cap. Yeah. Yeah, he just got up, no cap. I to be honest, I feel like he's about to be he's about to go. No cap is about to be out of here. Now I'm going to find out that you're somehow involved, invested in trying to sign to be a label or something. No? I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? Let's smash these kids up. Let's smash yeah, these yeah, so. And Doughboy. Shout out, shout out my boy Doughboy. Doughboy's doing his thing right now. So you're listening to all these new artists. You have playlists. You're on there. You're interested in the new artists. And that's what you're on. You're listening. Like, what are you mostly listening to? What playlist did you make that these artists are on right now? This is your personal uh, playlist? Is, or are you going through Rap Caviar? No, 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 no. This is my own playlist. Look, okay. listening history. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, well, you're listening history. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Yo, tell us about your relationship with Pump, man. We, you, you got the video out. Yeah, I did, uh, what was it, Office Space, a little takeoff of Office Space, it looks like. Um, like, y'all having fun, y'all got the nails, tattoos, it, it seems like y'all just got just, just an ill chemistry together. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like when, uh, I feel like when I, when, when I make a song with Pump, um, I could, I, I feel like I could bring the best out of him. And I don't mean that in, 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 in like, some type of shady way i feel like when i work with pump i could i bring the best out of him um mm-hmm. and same and, and same thing with me it's like you know what i'm saying when i get on a song with him um he he remind he he reminds me like sometimes i gotta go back to like what i was doing before even though that's not like the the image the, um, the agenda i'm trying to push but like you know just a little bit just give him the turn of stuff sometimes so you know what i'm saying and uh, my relationship with him is good. That's all. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? We came up together. Um, we were na- we we grew up neighbors, like you know, same block. So that's my best friend. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? I see him like my real brother. I think that's great, man. Because you know, so many times in in hip hop, people is dissing each other, and it's just a just a lot of trolling and everything. It's it's really cool. And we could we could definitely see that uh, when you guys are together, like it's it's a real friendship. I, I I love to see stuff like that, man. Especially two younger guys. Thank you, thank you, man. Appreciate that. When when, y- when y'all was coming up, did, did y'all talk about like y- your dreams and actually getting to this to this place where y'all at? Like, was y'all just sitting there like splitting? Definitely. Splitting definitely, the definitely, definitely. We definitely talked about it, but it was more on some like, yo, imagine, imagine. Cause we really, we really never thought it was gonna happen. It was more on some like, yo, imagine this, 
imagine that, imagine this, and like all that ended up happening. Wow. So, That's dope. I want to ask. Really, all of, because really all of our first songs, like the song that, that, that gave me that push, Ski Mask, and the songs that gave him that push, we recorded those on, on, on the Apple mic, Apple headphones, like, you know what I'm saying? Shot the video with Cole Bennett, and that gave me that first push, and it gave him that first push, too. It was on the New York Times and all that. What's Florida seen like since X passing? I mean, I know it was significant to hip hop, but how do you feel the music, the Florida music scene has changed for you guys with his being there and in, in, in his absence? You know, how would you describe uh, the music scene for you guys? It definitely, it definitely feels like there's, there's something missing. It feels like there's something missing because, you know what I'm saying, X did bring a lot of people together. Um, he, you know, he, he was a good person. He, 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 he changed, like he, he did, he did as much as he could to, you know, change his ways and, and stuff like that. And, um, he was doing really good. He was like donating charities. He was a, 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 don't like giving food out for the kids coming to school. You know, he was really doing his best to, that he, that he could to change. And, and he actually made that change. So when he passed, it was really like, it was, it, it felt like something was missing. Cause it was like, it was like, man, like, if you're doing, how can you be doing something good for the city? And you know, people are still out here trying to take your life. Like that just shows you that it's, it's, it's not even about you doing good. It's just about people being envious, and people being jealous. Right. And um, yeah, but it, it, it does feel like something is like something is missing. It feels like there's a hole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think so because you guys were so. Uh you know, kind of grouped together, coming out thriving, everybody having the scene within a year or two of each other. And then, and he seemed very much at the forefront of it, even in the social aspect of it, not just musically, but in, you know, right. everybody knowing each other at all of that and, um, you know, being a pulse of that kind of thing. So, um, you know, that definitely affects the music scene. It will be interesting to see how um, that with Pop Smoke affects the Brooklyn drill scene and, and you know, and the new New York that's coming right. because, you know, you're kind of hyped up on this this person or this character that's involved in this new movement or in this, you know, rejuvenated movement. And then you're dealing with the grief from it and the lack of that music at the same time. But um, it seems like you guys are trying to hold them down. Right. And you know what's crazy? Even though I'm not from New York, when, um, when, when Pop Smoke passed, it almost had the same effect. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, Cause it was so random and, and it was so shocking. He was so young. He was 20 years old. So it almost had the same impact. Uh, like, you know, it had like, I felt it like that, even though I didn't know him like personally, like it was big because he, anywhere you go, it was pop smoke playing. He was, he was really everywhere. He was running from New York to LA to Miami. It was just pop smoke back to back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even though I didn't know him, that really, that also really hit me because it was like, man, like, you really never know. Like, this this was a good kid. Like, you know, trying to better himself, you know what I'm saying, from from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, from from the trenches, you know what I'm saying, and to to come out here to L.A. and, and, and you know, and, and pass away in Beverly Hills, like, yeah. you know, that hits you hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wish, uh, you know, we talked about Rolling Loud earlier. I, I wish Pop would have had his – his chance, man. I know when he tried to do Rolling Loud um, in New York, they, they were talking about shutting it down. He had problems with the NYPD, man. And, you know, so many things. I, I You know, obviously, I wish the brother was still alive. I wish nothing happened to him. But I wish he could have actually just seen just a little bit more because he, you know, they, they took him out so early. He didn't even get a chance to really just really – feel the full effects of, of his project, you know, like he died like right after his project came out. Like the time is so yeah. You know, like Biggie man, like obviously again, we wish Big was still here. You know, I, I love Big. That's my favorite artist, but I wish he would have really felt the impact of when he put out that Life After Death album, like how big, you know, that 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 project was, man. Like it's, it's a shame. I think we lost. I think we lost smoke, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. He's 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 I, I like I like Smoke man. Like I've I've actually had a chance to just do a few interviews. Like I said, like you know, we do Rolling Loud, me and Ramon, and we had a chance to to uh speak to him on a number of occasions and he's just a really humble guy, man. Like that's one of the things that I like about him. Oh, they saying Oh, it says they he's trying to find him. I guess he looks, but that, that's one of the things that I, I really like about him is that he's just a real humble guy. I mean, you know, him still recognizing the impact of the XXL freshman cover, him saying that's the biggest accomplishment of his career. Him, yeah, so. yeah, he's always nice when he comes to visit and all of that. Yeah, um, what's it called? And candid and honest, and you know. a lot, yeah, a lot of artists forget where they come from, a lot of artists is like. And you know, well, he he's he's a good guy. He got a hell of a hell of a view. Yeah. All right, we'll give um restarting Wi-Fi two minutes. Move the pressure. Indeed. The pressure. Well, I haven't watched anything new, Sha. So. Nah, I haven't watched anything new. I don't know why. I feel like it's all Zoom, you know. Yeah, all of my shows uh, have ended too. Like a, a few shows that I watched, like they had this sh show uh, on Vice called The Dark Side of the Ring, where they looked at like some of wrestling's biggest scandals that came on every week. That's so up your alley. Oh yeah. That's so up your alley. Did you watch Glow? Was that up your alley or no? That was too not. Big time, no, nah, big time. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, they, they, that guy was crazy. Yeah, yeah. That was off his rock, and you know, it just took me back. I used yeah. to watch it every Saturday morning. Glow used to come on right after WWF at the time, so I loved it. I remember Mount Fiji and Hollywood and Bond and all of that. It was crazy. Hey, we got him coming. Back, my bad. My Wi-Fi shut off. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Anyway, you got that big tennis court in the, in the back. Do you play? Are you athletic like that? Tennis? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't play the tennis. But we have a, we have like a a, a basketball hoop on each side, so it's like a full court basketball court. That's what we do. All right, so we got a little basketball court, but no tennis. Who, who you played? I mean, no, we have the tennis. We could do both, but we just play the full court basketball. But, like, really, when you got your eyelids tattooed, how much did that hurt? How do I flip this back? It hurt a lot. It felt like they were tattooing my eyeball. I really thought that I was going to open my eyes and they were just going to be like, oh, my pupil. I really felt like they were tattooing my eye. But yeah, I got 97 the year I was born. Boy. Now, when he said that the year I was born was 97, is insane. Um, all right, I don't think we have such good connection with you, but I think we did get a good interview with you. So I think we're going to let you go just because the Wi-Fi is so-so. And, um, you know, I don't want you to have to restart and start and restart. I got one more. I got one more. Can we get one more question? And if it's not robotic, right? Enough? Too robotic? First of all, 97, one of the greatest years in hip hop. Uh, you should listen to all of the albums if you get a chance, man. Listen to all of the albums that came out in 97, Biggie, uh, so many, man. It, it, it was a great year. But I wanted to ask you, out in L.A., they had the protest yesterday over George Floyd. And, yeah. Um, I wanted to, just to know what, what you think about the whole situation with these cops continually to kill these black men and women and Latino men and women. Um, you know, men and women of color and just going free. You know, like nothing is happening to them. They're getting fired, but that's about it. Yeah, man, I think I think it's, to be honest, like even saying messed up is like in, I think we're looking at him, right? Not happening. Not happening, sweetie. 
made because it's, it's not it's, 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 it's like it's almost like war it's almost like they're against the you know what I'm saying we're not supposed to and they're just out here kill and can you hear me not really yeah totally you sound like a robot i think we're coming to the end of everything over here with your service but we love you it's the cops they shut them down when we asked the political question <laughs> All right, listen, Perp, congrats on the project. We're looking forward to hearing everything with it. Um, definitely, and whatever you got going on next to us, you know, once everything gets back to normal, you're always welcome to visit us, and you got fam over here. We wish you all the best of the luck. If you do use that tennis court, we'd like to see some video. I, I, put assume, he, I, assume, I assume he liked that. I don't know. Yeah, they put your phone on mute. You gotta, you gotta take it. You gotta take it off. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually play pump and tennis and give you guys the footage. Oh please, I would like to see that. Okay, I got you. I'm on your team. I'm on your team. I'm rooting for you. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Be safe. Appreciate you guys. You too. Be safe during this quarantine and these times, guys. Yes, you too. The same in your family and all of it. Yeah. All right, bye. All right, Joe. Peace.